Hi there, welcome. For those people or who already know about what I'm going to show you, please skip forward and go and check the moulds out that I'm casting. Uh, that's on? Right, okay. This is for the people that are, if you're going to dabble into casting, just a few of the items that you actually need to actually get yourself started. The first thing I'll start with, the most important, is casting powder. Just put that one there. Uh, the first one is a Herculite 2. Now this is a good all-round casting powder. It will do all of your moulds. But saying that, I do use two casting powders, and this is the Crystallite R. This is a porcelain finish plaster, which is extremely hard. I use this for the more delicate pieces like tiles, uh, slates, uh, little things like that. So they're both good quality uh, casting powders. I will put a link in the description uh, where you can actually get these from. Uh, you can actually get these off eBay. But other countries, I don't know what, which country you're, you're in, you might have to find an equivalent to it. Right, that is the main, main thing. That's the most important. I'll stress that now, is to get a good quality casting plaster to cast in rubber silicon moulds. Plaster of Paris is no good. Don't even think about it. Or decoration filler or anything like that. You will not get good results. Right, moving along. What we have is a set of digital scales. The set of digital scales is for measuring weight-wise your casting powder. Most, well, all casting powders will come to either a, a two to one ratio or a three to one ratio, which is one milliliter of water to two grams of casting powder. So you need a set of scales to measure that out accurately. Uh, the next thing, well, well, I'll move these things in because I think a lot of them are out of shape. A spoon, well, the spoon's for fishing up your powder. Nothing too technical about that. There isn't nothing too technical you need. A paintbrush, that is for mixing your plaster and also for painting pigments or paints into your moulds. That's a basic thing. A basic scraper, any shape or size. This is for cleaning off the tops of your moulds. We move along. Mixing containers, these can be yoghurt pots, they can be anything you like, as long as you can mix them. We also have a disposable syringe. This is a 10 mil syringe. Uh, you'll find that most of the moulds, you won't go over 12 mil. Actually, this is it goes up to 12 mil, this one does. They're very cheap to get hold of, and you will get an accurate mix by using something like this. Next to it, we have a, a piece of uh, plastic. This is to actually put your moulds on. So I'll bring the mould down. The moulds are quite flexible and soft. This is just so when you cast, you can cast into your mould and you can actually move it away, put it somewhere safe to dry, because if you pick it up, as you can see, you're going to end up breaking your parts, damaging them, and things like that. Put that mould back in its place. Now, another thing that you need is a plastic container and some rinse age. Now the rinse age aid is for soaking your moulds in before you cast in them. You will do a small amount into their water, put your mould in into it and soak it then partially, partially dry it off before you start casting. The rinse aid helps release, well, it breaks the water tension in the plaster and helps release the air bubbles from the face of the mould so you do get decent parts. Now, uh, colours. There, I've already done, there's two videos out. One on pigments, which is, I use the Vallejo pigments. And there's also one out on paints. 
I use the Vallejo paints. It's just that that's what I have to hand. There's two videos out. The choice is yours on what colours and how you do it. If you're going to do a lot of casting, I would recommend pigments. If it's going to be little bits and pieces and you don't want to buy pigments and you've got paints in your uh, box, you can use paints quite easily and just as good as pigments. So that is your colouring. We move on now. Uh, I have a small vibrating table which I made myself. There is a video out how to actually make this particular vibrating table. It shows you, tells you all the parts that you need, how to do it, everything. If you don't want to build a vibrating table, you can actually get away with using a piece of plastic and getting a piece of foam rubber or sponge, placing it on, tapping it with your finger. That will do just as well. Uh, failing that, you can actually use a compressor. Start your compressor up on your board and just gently lay it on top of the compressor. The vibrations will do exactly the same job as well. So there's three options there if you require to for a vibrating table. Moving on, the final thing, and I will stress this because this has caused quite a few marital breakups, is I'll just move the camera slightly. Is a container to wash up in. Uh, you need a container to wash up in for the simple reason is when you mix the plaster with the water, the water is only a medium to hold the plaster and the plaster will sink and harden under water. So if you wash your cups up, your moulds, that will go down the drain and it will block your sink up straight away. So if you get yourself a largest container that you can actually put stuff, wash stuff up and get it cleaned up. So that's it. So next up is how to cast the moulds. Hi there, welcome. Right, I've got another mould that's I've got, I'm doing a production run up now. This is the pier one, uh, and if I remember rightly, we have 27 to 27 inch piers, we have an 18, and also I think there's a 13 inch pier. Uh, you only just sort of like two sides. So, to start off with, we get that straight into the uh, rinse aid. Let that have a little bit of soak. Now, this particular mould is a 12 mil, so that's 12 mils of water, 24 grams of casting powder. So we get a, a, a container. We use that one because that one's a red one. Right, we'll so that's a full 12 mils of uh, water. And also 24 grams of powder. And I state this every time. Make sure that your measurements are as close as you can get them. Because it will save you powder. And also it will make the flow in the mould a lot easier. The manufacturers do put the quantities on the side of your, on the bags. Please read it because it will make your life a lot easier a bit later on. Right, in with the powder. As you can see, I don't bother sprinkling it. I just put it in and let it get on with it. Out with the mould. As normal, don't take all the water off. Leave it quite wet. And then we move on to our pigment. I'm using pigment this time. 50-50 uh, mix with 50% uh, pigment, uh, pigment and 50% water which gives you a sort of like a, a good reasonable middle ground colour then just paint the moulds and the one thing I do like about pigment 
is that you don't get the build up like with paint uh, especially if, you, if you're running if you're going to be doing a lot with the mold using the pigment you don't have to use uh, keep washing it each time you can just wipe it down put it into your rinse aid and start fresh again and any pigment that's left in the mold will reactivate when you put the plaster in and I've closed that up and that's the wrong thing to do because I need to put a good wedge into the uh, plaster just to give it a background colour so all done there get the vibrating table on and the same with these pour along the edge so we don't push the pigment out of the mould and just let your vibrating table do well the vibrating table as you can see is moving the plaster along I am going to have to put my hand in front of the camera hopefully I can do it without uh, blocking too much but I run it from both sides right so Then we'll wash that up. Now it's been vibrating not for long. You don't you don't really need to leave this vibrating that long. I run the finger around the edge just to break the water tension there and allow the water just to trickle off. Now I can't see no air bubbles coming up, so that to me is done. So we'll leave that for a good four or five minutes just until the surface starts to harden and then we'll come back and we'll clean it off with the uh, scraper. Okay, it's been a good three or four minutes, probably even longer actually, it's about five minutes and the surface is just going off and with your spatula Oh, you can see this. I'll have to take that clamp off. We just go across the surface and just take any excess off. The cleaner you can get it, is the better because you have no flash then. So that's it. Now we're just going to put that in the rack, leave it to dry, and I'll be back in a little while and we'll turn it out and see what we've got. Okay, we're back with, this is the pier mould, I'll just tease that off, I don't want to break anything, and hopefully we should be able to get these out, you do have to be a little bit delicate with the, the smaller ones, sometimes I'm a little bit ham-fisted and I end up breaking them. I don't even bother saving them. I just put them in the bin because it's not worth the hassle. But we're going to get that one out. I hopefully think, yes, there's the first one. I will try and get these out first on the mould uh, because they are very, very delicate. We've got a bird on the roof now, hopping around. And there's the second one. The rest of them come out reasonably easy because they're larger. As you can see, they're all nice. And the centre ones, they come out even better because they're bigger. So, that's it. And if you just clean the worst of the muck off, Like so. Now, you can see there's quite a bit of pigment left in there. Now, what I do, I put it straight back into my rinse aid. Uh, I know your rinse aid will get dirty, but you need to change your rinse aid. But you can now just give that a few minutes, well, even a few seconds, 
And as you can see by the state of this towel, this is what I used to clean it out with. Now, once the liquid gets onto the pigment, it just reactivates it. So as you knock it out, it will take all that clogged up pigment out of the corners and everywhere like that. And then you can use it straight away. And uh, it just saves you all the trouble of running back, back, backwards and forwards and cleaning. Because the pigment, yes, there's pigment left in there. But that pigment will be picked up next time uh, with the plaster. And it just means that you don't have to keep going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, washing your mould, cleaning your mould. And to be honest with you, sometimes you get some real nice effects because if you leave the pigment build up and don't bother uh, knocking it out too much, you actually get the edges of the bricks distorted, and which to me looks even better. It looks more natural. So that's it. That's it for the... Uh, brick set, uh, not brick segment, but this is uh, the piers. I'm getting confused now. That's it for the brick piers. Uh, and there will be more to come. I'll, sh I'll be running through all the moulds. So thank you very much for joining me, and we'll see you on the next one.